And here we go again for the Draw Along Show. This is number two for the week, the Thursday episode. Yesterday, I'm so glad everybody was able to join me for some Draw Along action. We're going to do the same thing today, which means we start with a You Draw It, where you can follow along with me and we can all draw something together. Only takes about uh, 10 minutes. Amazing. And then we're going to do today a Who Made That, where I will show you a tiny little clue, a little sliver of a illustration or a painting. And you have to tell me in the chat who you think made that art. Who is the artist who made that art? Let's test your knowledge of artists out there, okay? And then we're going to finish with the animal and activity game where you're going to turn on those amazing, powerful imaginations of yours and you're going to come up with an animal doing something unexpected or funny. And I will draw that for you in the time we have remaining in the show. It's a short show, folks. It's about 25, 26 minutes long. And then that's it. So it's your little dose of drawing magic for the day. Okay. Hi to folks in the chat. I see Biola and Sam and I see Fabio and Umacorn and I see Vaida. How are you? And Mercurial is here as well. Um, RB is here again. Nice to see you as well. Lots of nice folks joining in. I think I see, uh, did I say Steven? Did I say hi to Steven? Laura, how are you? Thank you for joining us. Clever is there. She says lurking. Clever is lurking. There's no lurking in the draw long show. Everybody's welcome. But you don't have to chat. You can just hang out, whatever you want. All right, so uh, yeah, how's the weather up there? A lot of folks are already getting snow in certain parts of the world. If you're far, far enough north, it's already happening, gang. I mean, it's November. Uh, question for you, how do you find Will Smith in the snow? You look for fresh prints. Folks, I'd like to apologize for the quality of that joke. Here at the Draw Along Show, we try and do at least a C minus grade joke every day, and that one just fell short. Anyway, time to draw. Alrighty then, to do these drawings, you need to have something to draw with. Could be a pencil, a pen, a marker, a crayon, or speaking of uh, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, could be a nice expensive pair of vintage Nikes that you dip in some paint and draw all over the driveway, driveway with. I don't care. Listen, I'm not gonna judge. You draw with what you want and you follow along. And to follow along, you have to be able to do three simple things. Remember what they are? A straight line, a zigzag, and a curvilinear line. See, that's an S curve. Could be a C curve, right? Little one, long one, doesn't matter. If you can do these three things, and I know you can, you can follow along with the show. Today we have a cute drawing. Let's do a cute drawing together. Are you ready? We're going to start with a triangle. I want you to look at this triangle carefully. It starts with a little straight line like this. See, that's horizontal. And then I'm just going to do this. I'm going to draw lines down towards the center of that first line. And I would say that that triangle is not equilateral, is it? No. These two diagonal lines I drew are shorter than the first, are they not? Keep that in mind for your drawings. Now on top of that, we're going to draw another triangle, but it's going to be taller. And again, it's not equilateral because these two lines are going to be longer than the first line we drew. Check it out. We're going to go up like this and down like that. And that is the beginning of our drawing. Two triangles stacked on top of one another. Interesting beginning. Now here, underneath that first triangle, okay, we're going to draw a short line like that. Very short. Not even half the length of that first line we drew. If you want to do comparative measurement, and we do. That's part of the old draw along show. We learn about comparative measurement. Now, I want you to look at the width of this entire drawing so far. And we're going to jump out to the side here. All right, so if I were to draw a line and continue this diagonal to here, right, and then just slide it over a little bit to about here, that's where I want to be. See that? We come down and slide it on over. And this line is going to cut off that little tiny line we drew. And it's going to come over to the side at about the same spot on the right as the left. Okay, so you want to have some symmetry going on. We do a lot of symmetrical drawings on this show. Bernie, thank you for joining us. Nice to see you. Hello, hello. Uh, and Laura says, oh, I see a lion's nose. Hmm, good guess, good guess. Uh, isosceles, Stephen says, well, you know, I don't remember my geometry too well. 
which one's an isosceles triangle? I think it's this one, right? All right, now, at the end of this longer line, we're going to draw a almost circle, okay? But it's a little taller than the average circle. So it is an oval, but it's pretty close to a circle, okay? Check it out, like, like this. All right, same on this side. That's where we are so far. Okay, everybody following along? Good. Up at the top of this triangle, we're going to draw another line. Now that line is going to stop at about the same spots that this long line down here stops. Okay, so if I just creep on up this away, right? Straight on up and start about here and just draw across like that, I'm in pretty good shape. Alrighty. That is where we go next. Okay, now, now, we're going to draw a line that is going to be pretty much the same angle as this, only it's, it's, going, to, it's going to come out a bit more, so a bit more obtuse if you're looking at this line here. So instead of being parallel to this, it's going to creep out a bit more this way. Watch. This is what we're doing. See that? Not quite the same, a bit more obtuse. Okay? And you're going to draw it down to about just above that first line we drew, so about to here, okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to curve it like a J. It's going to curve out like that. Do the same thing on this side. Out we go and curve, okay? If you don't have perfect symmetry, don't worry about it. No one's going to judge. Everybody's safe. No worries, okay? Now, before we do anything else, I want to take this line we drew here pass over the oval, and then continue drawing it a little further out like so. Same with this one. Alrighty. Uh, Steven says, could be a very thin pixie with a huge hat. Oh yeah, could be. Good guess, good guess. Pink Panther, perhaps, I don't know. Dennis, nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Dennis. All right, ready for this? We're gonna do one line and two lines that are gonna echo this shape. We're gonna go one and two. One and two. Same on both sides. See that? Look at this first line we drew again. Pop over a little ways. So bounce over this way, pop up just a hair, and make a nice big dot. Over on the other side, same deal. Or as Slidini says, same thing, same thing. Uh, phenomenal, amazing magician. Look him up, Slidini. You want to see something amazing? Look up Slidini's silk trick. Watch him performing with the silk or handkerchief. And if you want to see something crazy, he keeps tying knots in it and then they just keep disappearing. It's insane. All right, now from this corner here, we're going to travel up at a slight angle here. and We're going to make a short distance like so. Same on that side. All right, and then we're going to curve that down to here. Check it out, C curve, C curve, okay? So far so good. From this corner where we change from a straight line to a curvilinear line, we're just gonna angle down this way and then angle down that way. Look at that, what do we have here? One line there, one line there, and repeat on the other side and you have a little putty tat peeking out from behind something. And what is that something? Well, you can make it whatever you want. Today, we're going to make it a log in the grass. So maybe this kitty is stalking something in the grass. Maybe it's a squirrel, I don't know. Now to make it so that the log is sitting in the grass, we're gonna draw a line down, another line down, all right? And then what we're gonna do is put these little lines like this. Some can be zigzag, some can be lines, okay? And that way you don't draw the bottom of the log as a straight line. You draw the stuff it's sitting in, right? Which is grass. So there you go. And how do I make it look like a log? Well, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to draw lines that travel across, okay? But not in a straight line. So they're going to be kind of wavy like that. So there's one. And then what I can do is draw a sort of a looping shape like that. And then I can draw another one that does this. And then I can go like this and then connect it to that one. 
right? See what we're doing here? And then that one goes there. And maybe this one goes like that. Okay, and that's how you make a sort of log pattern. And you can do little dashes and dots any old place as well to add a bit of texture. And finally, I like to just do this simple trick. Just go up like that and do a little line like that. And you can put a little leaf there, okay? And here is our cat spying something ready to pounce. Who knows? Or maybe just watching what's going on. You know how cats are, right? Kitty cat peeking out from behind a log. There you go. Biola had guessed it was a koala, and that was a good guess earlier on, especially with the shape of the nose. Indeed. Um, Mercurial, you called it off the first kitty nose triangle. I didn't know that. I missed that comment. Well done. Well done. All right. It is time for who made that. I will show you the clue. There it is. Zoom in on that so you can see it nice and clearly. The question is, who made that? that okay so you look at the clue and in the chat you go ahead and tell me what you think who made that who made that um by the way if you are wanting to join the chat i keep mentioning this uh, famous chat here well you have to be watching over on be.net slash adobe live be like to be or not to be be.net slash Adobe Live. That is where I'm following the chat. If you're watching on YouTube or Twitter, I can't see your comments, but I, I'm glad you're here all the same. We have Laura says, is that a tiger tail? It is indeed. And Sam says, bam, Bill Watterson with two T's. It is indeed Calvin and Hobbes. Let's check it out. Why would I show you a Calvin and Hobbes picture? Why, 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 why? Well, it's because this is a drawing show. We appreciate drawing on this show. And Bill Watterson, as you can see from this illustration, is one heck of an artist. Boy, could he draw. And he really knew his way around watercolor. All right. Ink and watercolor, a beautiful combination when used very well, like this example here. There are a few things I want to point out with this illustration. Okay. Bit of info on Bill. Here he is. 1958, he was born. I believe he's 65 years old, right? Am I doing my math correctly? Um, 64, 65. Uh, and he's the creator of Calvin and Hobbes, of course. We all know and love Calvin and Hobbes, one of the greatest newspaper comic strips of all time. Um, and just one of the greatest character combos ever created of all time, correct? Uh, Stoney, nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. So let's take a look at this illustration. First, the line art. One of the things Bill Watterson does beautifully is change the weight of his lines. So I want you to look at the difference between the line weight of this tree in the foreground, which is extremely fat. That is some heavy line. And then I want you to compare that with the line work here in the little leaves that are coming off of that uh, tree. I also want you to look at the line weight in our characters here and contrast that with what we have here. So this comes forward as a big, bold shape. These move into the middle ground. What happens to the line work here in this purple tree, in this blue tree? Well, guess what? It vanishes altogether. What does that do? It reduces detail and it pushes those trees into the background. So we have a background, a middle ground, and a foreground, okay? Here's some tricks that he is using. The other thing about his line work is how expressive it is, right? Now he has to be very accurate and careful to stay on model for his characters, but he's drawn them so many times that he can do so in an expressive and what appears to be a loose, scratchy kind of way of moving that brush or pen around on the surface, right? And that adds and breathes life into the drawing. And the same goes for the shapes that he chooses, these organic shapes for the trees that have the trunks that are wonky shapes like so, the branches that just explode out of those bodies like that. Look at how quick and confident these lines are here. Now let's take a look at the watercolor technique of Bill Watterson, okay? Because this is really something. He is pushing the saturation of the color to the max, right? You see how, I mean, you're not going to go out in nature and see blues like this and purples like this. Um, you're going to see a lot duller color. Um, no matter how bright and beautiful the day is, and even if it's right in the middle of fall, 
But to take these colors and to push that saturation and to use a bright brown like this, how often are you going to see a trunk that has a reddish brown color like that? Um, this here is closer to what you're going to see for a typical uh, tree trunk. Um, but to use all that color just breathes a lot of life into this. It's a comic after all, right? And it's, uh, it's more colorful and more exciting than real life. And that's the whole idea. But let's also look at how confidently he applies his washes, okay? So a wash like this with all that nice yellow, you've got to get that down fast so that you don't get a bunch of line work inside of the wash. The same can be said for this blue here, this light blue. You've got to pick your shape and go for it and get that paint down while it's wet and keep pu pushing that pigment around and then leave it alone and let it dry. You don't keep overworking it with the brushes. That's how you destroy a watercolor. Same with the ground here. But what I love is where he affords himself these opportunities to go crazy with watercolor and let it do its thing. If you look closely inside of the trunk here, take a look at all of this beautiful activity that is happening because of how he's applying the paint. It's wet into wet. You get some wet paint. You change it, the color slightly with some gradations. You allow the paint to drip and run. Oh my gosh, all this beautiful stuff. This is what really makes it work. So watercolor is a great medium for him to use, okay? Um, letting the paint dry back here, this lighter blue, and then when it's dry, going in over it with a slightly darker blue for a bit of detail work, right? Very nice stuff. So I thought we'd share that today and take a look at a gorgeous Bill Watterson ink and watercolor drawing. Got to appreciate the art of the comics, not just the art that appears in the galleries and so on, because it's beautiful art and because these people really know how to do their thing. Lots to learn from looking at that. And there you go. Okay. Oh, hey, I hear an alarm. What is the alarm? It is appreciation station, folks. Okay, and today we are appreciating our good friend Vaida, Vaida Lu. Thank you for joining us on the Draw Along Show. You might not remember this is a long time ago, but we were skiing in Colorado and we got hopelessly lost on the side of the mountain. Of course, I started panicking right away, but you didn't. What you did was you took one of your skis and you drew a perfect copy of the Mona Lisa about 50 yards high on the side of the mountain in a short amount of time, I'll say. And it was so gorgeous. And then we dialed for help and they said, where are you? We said, we don't know. But you said, don't worry, look for the Mona Lisa in the mountain. And sure enough, it was easy for them to spot from miles away, beautiful work of art, recognizable as well. And away they flew and came right to our rescue. So thank you, Vaida, for that incredible idea, for your artistic skill and for saving our bacon on that day. Thank you so much. And now we are going to do the animal and activity game. So Put on your thinking caps and please, for me, suggest in the chat an animal doing something strange, funny, weird, bizarre, unexpected. Some suggestions we've had in the past have been things like a surfing monkey. We have had a bat that was singing opera. We've had a gator that was bouncing on a pogo stick. Uh, last week we had a yeti that was hiking. And just yesterday we had this fashionable gazelle. What do you think about that? So I'm ready for your suggestions. Throw them in the chat. I'll grab my light blue and I'm ready to draw. All right, today we have a turkey meeting a peacock. I wonder if they would be good friends. I wonder if a turkey meeting a peacock is a good situation. Which of those two animals is the friendlier? I don't know, I've heard that peacocks can be aggressive animals, I don't know. Um, clever, I like that. I don't know if I could draw a peacock because I never drawn one before. <laughs> Um, how about a buffalo playing American football, says RB. That could be interesting. They're pretty well built for it. A koala cooking with an apron, says Biola. Koala cooking with an apron. That could be very cute. Mercurial says a sparrow baking a pie. A sparrow baking a pie. And Laura says a snake skateboarding. I wonder how they would pull that off. A turkey in a turkey trot runs, says Misty. Yeah, I know a lot of folks here in town who do the turkey trot. I uh, haven't done it myself. My feet hurt. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, da -da 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 -um, I gotta make a decision here. Um, an otter building Lego from Umicorn. Uh, let's uh, let's try this um, koala cooking with an apron on, Viola. How about that? Let's try that. Let's try that. Uh, Clever says a peacock is essentially a different colored turkey. Now that you mention it, and I think about it, I can see what you mean. 
I see what you mean. All right, so we got those little ears that the koalas have, and then we got the funny shaped little head. A little, give him a little tuft of hair at the top there. And their ears are kind of shaggy like that. Kidoki. And they've got those long noses, right? And we're going to have them cooking with an apron on. That's the, that is the assignment here. So let's have one arm up and stirring a little something here. Or maybe, uh, no, let's have one arm up with the, the spoon, like a ladle, I guess. Like they're, they're testing something out. And the other arm is going to be in here. Doing something with whatever's in the pot. Okay, how's that? Like this. Bing. And we'll throw the handle out that away. And this is going to be the the cooking surface here. So I'm going to throw some uh, little knobs out here for controlling the heat and all that business. Should we put a little chef's hat? On our koala, sure, why not? That's kind of cute, right? And let us knock back the opacity of our sketch so we can then get to the drawing part. I'm going to use my darker blue, as we always do make a new layer. I always get questions about the brush I'm using, folks. This is a free brush you can grab on my Gumroad page. So that's kyletwebster.gumroad.com. It's called the Doozy Inker. The Doozy Inker. D o-o-z-y okay try it you'll like it nice expressive brush chef's hat I was um, really influenced by Bill Watterson as a kid. I mean, who wasn't? If, if you're into drawing and you grew up any time close to when I did, then you too were probably influenced by Watterson. If you had any interest in drawing, it was always the best looking um, comic in the newspaper every week no contest and you know I have a sneaking suspicion that the other cartoonists knew it I think they knew <laughs> they were like oh man can you stop already you know he just he took it so seriously the 
the task of creating a beautiful comic every week for his audience and um you know yeah i'm glad he did he left us with some incredible work did he not just gorgeous best i've ever seen reminded me of you know the quality of things you'd see in the earlier part of the century the the you know little nemo pogo these other things all that stuff all righty there you go koala wonderful thank you for that suggestion that was fun well folks tomorrow's my master class at 4 p.m eastern we're going to talk about illustrating on your favorite photos how to add something with some illustration that should be pretty cool um thank you for joining me uh, remember to take care of yourselves take care of each other please also remember to be kind and i will say ciao for now